Dr. Bugs here, your friendly neighborhood entomologist, and today we're going to discuss one of the overlooked fundamentals of being an insect, walking. And this guy, Mastigoproctus giganteus, is going to help us. You thought snakes on a plane was interesting? Well today, we're doing scorpions on a treadmill. Sort of. Where's my theme music? He ain't got no competition. Walking. Seems easy enough, right? If you're a biped, you just put one foot in front of the other, and suddenly you've moved from point A to point B. But what if you had six legs? I trip and fall fairly regularly, and I only have two. Insects have three times that much, and still they boast some rather impressive coordination. How do insects do it? Well, let's take a look at Franklin, my Mastigoproctus giganteus, to get a better idea. Central pattern generators are partly responsible for- Um, but Dr. Bugs, um, well, if we want to learn about walking in insects, why are we looking at the step cycle for Mastigopractus giganteus? Isn't that an arachnid? Well, first of all, little Sammy, it's pronounced arachnid with a hard C. And secondly, great question. Franklin is an arachnid, which means he has eight legs. And it would make sense to expect that he would move a bit differently from an insect with six. But Franklin does sort of have six legs. Mastigopractus giganteus literally means big whip anus in Greek. But the whip scorpions didn't just get their common name from the whip on their back end. Those front legs also look fairly whip-like, and they're just as important if not more. Rather than being for walking, they're used as sensory organs to compensate for their poor visual acuity. I'm legally blind. That means for all intents and purposes, Franklin basically is a hexapod, having only six walking legs, a configuration not uncommon to a number of arachnid families. Now for this video, I've deployed the departmental bug treadmill so you can get a better look at how a hexapod typically moves. If you look closely, you'll see a pattern emerging. Franklin is moving half of his legs as a unit. The front and rear legs on one side of Franklin's body move in synchrony with the middle leg on the other side. This pattern is alternated on each side, moving him forward. That may be a bit difficult to see here at full speed, so let's slow it down and switch orientation. From above, it's pretty easy to see that at each point in the step cycle, Franklin has three legs on the ground. This movement style is called the alternating tripod gate, and it grants the walker static stability. That means Franklin could stop at any point in the step cycle and not fall over. You try that. Stop right in the middle of a step. No, no, seriously, I'll wait. You feel that tightness around your ankle? That's the feeling of your muscles working desperately to keep you from falling over. And there's only so long they can keep that up. Stable is likely not the best adjective to describe you. Now I don't know if you feel it yet, but you should be pretty jealous of Franklin right about now. The alternating tripod gate doesn't make him trip proof, but he and his hexapod kin are nearly fall proof. Here you can see Franklin trips and hardly misses a beat thanks to the alternating tripod gate. Now compare the hexapod walking gate to that of humans. In what's called a double inverted pendulum gate, we push off from the ground with one foot for about half of our step cycle, and we simply rely on gravity to do much of the rest of the work. It's embarrassing, really. Half of what we call walking is really just falling forward. Remember in Toy Story when Woody says, That wasn't flying, that was falling with style. Well, hexapods would probably say something very similar about us if they could. The double inverted pendulum gate is fairly efficient. It allows for the recovery of nearly half of the energy put into each step. But the problem with this style is that it lacks static stability, making us vulnerable to nasty falls caused by even minor perturbations in our step cycle. Just one of a number of ways that bugs just seem to have this whole life thing figured out. The alternating tripod gate is such a cool way to move that it's conserved across the vast majority of ambulatory hexapods. And even insects that can't employ this style of movement have found a plethora of equally cool ways to get around. I mean, just consider the geometrids. These caterpillars don't have any legs arising from the middle of their bodies like most insects. All of their legs are concentrated on the front and back end. Soft-bodied insects like caterpillars don't have their legs distributed in a way where an alternating tripod gate could work and their hydrostatic skeletal system wouldn't allow for that mode of support in the first place, so they move themselves in a very different way. They move with something like a peristaltic wave of muscles, which is pretty cool to watch, 
but it's the geometries that bring an art to it. So it's really cool how this works. They grip the ground with their back legs and push the front of their bodies forward. And then they grip the ground with their front legs and pull the back of their bodies forward. You know, this will probably work better with a visual aid. Looks like I'm gonna have to find an inchworm. <laughs> All right, this is gonna be really cool. You see him? Okay, inch. Inch. Come on, man, you don't embarrass me. Everybody's watching. Okay, uh, well, uh, obviously this isn't working, but I have an idea. Hey, Toby. Hey, buddy. Um, you busy? Yes. Great. Because I was, I was talking with science, and uh, science wanted me to ask you a favor. Watch closely as the elegant young inchworm moves forward with slow but deliberate motions, first gripping the substrate, then giving a good push for steady locomotion. Ah, a grand feat indeed. Could there ever be a more fascinating subject than entomology? Thanks, Toby. Uh, I think I got what I needed. That was some great caterpillaring, by the way. <laughs> uh, oh, look. Now the inchworms are moving. Really? Aw, oh, come on, buddy. It was for science. Caterpillars with their odd foot distribution have to move differently than most insects. But it's so exaggerated in the inchworms that the entire family is defined by the movement of the larvae. The style of locomotion certainly has static stability. And it has the added benefit of making it look as if you're measuring the ground beneath you with each step, earning the inchworms the esteemed title of geometrity. Literally, the earth measurers. If insects and arachnids are this remarkable just in how they walk, imagine how much creativity they bring to everything else they do. Actually, you don't have to imagine. You found just the right channel to learn about all of it in profuse detail. All right, I feel like I made my point. I'm sure you are thoroughly convinced that insects are by far the coolest creatures on the entire planet. But on the off chance that you still have your doubts, click the subscribe button. Be the first to see my next video. That one will get you. I feel it. I feel it already. That's the one. I'll have you singing along in no time. He ain't got no competition. Only he run my prescription. Doctor Hey, it's Franklin, I'm coming over to play.